It's a nice notebook, but it's pretty plain. I think we could make it a little cooler. Hello friends, welcome to a tour of my newest D&D character's notebook, my Kalishtar Divination Wizard, Grey Wilding. I'm so excited to introduce you to Grey and talk through how I set up this new notebook, so let's dive in. As you can see, I have a few pockets in this binder, which is an A5 binder I got from Amazon. It's great to store little bits and pieces like some fan art drawn by my DM Rowan, and it's great to keep everything together, things that I may wanna put into my notebook later on, but I just don't have a space for it yet. I also have these stickers, which my other dungeon master, Cassie, got for me for Christmas last year. They're great for note-taking, and these are also from rnw.net, which if you have seen my previous D&D character notebook for my Unity Cleric Lola, you may recognize the setup. I once again used the modular character sheets by Penflower Inc. and the printable character journal from rnw.net and those will be linked in the description box below if you want to check them out for your own character. To the cover page from the printable character journal I just added a couple stickers and little scrapbook elements to add a little bit of personality before we move on to the main stats page. This is where I use the modular character sheets, so as you can see here, I'm figuring out how to place them, kind of moving them around on the pages. These, this is just some A5 craft paper that I also got from Amazon. It's really great because I can move things around in the notebook and add more pages as I need to. As Grey gets more abilities, she may need more pages to store information, so it's pretty easy to just pop those right in. I also added in this little book sticker that I got from a sticker pack I bought at a little shop while on vacation this summer. And some scrapbook paper, which I can't remember the brand for, but if I can find that, I'll leave that in the description as well. So I have only been playing Grey for a few months now. I'm playing her in a Discord campaign that I found through the server, the Red Talon Tavern, which is fantastic if you are looking for more people to talk D&D with. I'll link some information about that in the description as well. Lots of stuff going in the description today. Lots of fun things to tell you about. Here is where I have all of Grey's stats and her abilities. I'm just sticking those into the pages before I fill out her modifiers. So, as I said at the beginning, Grey is a wizard. She is a Kalishtar wizard, which for those of you who are not super versed on D&D, Kalishtars are very much human-like, but they have a dream spirit that kind of tags along. Much like an invisible friend, Ghost can't communicate verbally, but is still along for the ride and watching everything happen. Grey has named her dream spirit Ghost, and even though they can't respond back with words, Grey talks to them all the time, trying to get their read on situations, and it's made for some pretty interesting moments in the campaign for sure. And then Grey's class is Divination Wizard, which means that she can cast a lot of really cool spells, and she does a lot of things like detecting magic, identifying magic items, detecting people's thoughts. She is definitely a roleplay focused character, a little bit more than Lola, who focuses on support. But I really have loved having this roleplay kind of element to Grey and having a character that isn't quite as combat focused. It makes combat that more interesting for me trying to figure out a strategy but the role play elements are super fun I've already been having a great time with her and I can't wait to see it where the campaign goes along with the modular character sheet I've added in one of the pages from the printable character journal just to track a lot of Grey's features traits and languages that she knows it's a really easy way to uh, keep everything in one place. I have a color code system that you'll see me use here in a moment where I identify what things come from feats she's taken, what things come from being a Kalishtar, and what things come from being a wizard. So it's nice to kind of remember which things are from my class, which things are from my race. It's a lot of information and breaking it down in a simple way is very helpful for me in order to remember everything that I can do so I can be the most helpful I can be in roleplay and combat situations. 
I'm adding in Grey's features like her portents, which means that at the beginning of each day I get to roll two d20s and I can essentially tell the future and predict things that are going to happen. So if I roll high, I can give it to one of my other party members to help them. And if I roll low, then I can maybe give it to one of our enemies to make them fail a saving throw. Some of the things that Grey has gotten up to with her portents so far include uh, manipulating an NPC into giving us free masquerade masks, sneaking her spellbook into a court sentencing, doing an insight check on a creepy guy. It's definitely helpful to have a few things that I know are going to go well. Also, be sure to let me know if you enjoy seeing the process behind the notebook. I thought that was kind of missing from my last notebook tour, and I wanted to show you guys exactly what it looks like when I'm filling this out and creating the notebook using these different modular parts. On this little extra sheet, I'm just adding some of the custom skills that our Dungeon Master has given us. We have extra skills in nobility and dreaming, and I have a special one for making checks for my Kalishtar dream spirit. So these are just where I store any extra ones that aren't in the rules as written. And here's how it turned out. I'm really happy with how the sheet turned out for the basic stats. I'm excited to have lots more space in case there are more custom skills or more abilities that I want to keep track of. There's lots of room to grow here and it's very fun to see the potential. This is Gray's kind of bio page a little bit more. Once again, using the pieces from the printable character journal. I drew that little cauldron doodle a while ago in Procreate and printed it out to put in my bullet journal and just never used it. So it was a perfect fit here. These personality traits, uh, bonds, flaws, and Ideals are from the modular character sheet, so they actually work really well together to have a balance between the more structured sheets and things that are a little bit more movable. There's also some more fan art there. I don't know why I call it fan art. Well, I think it's fan art. We're fans of ourselves. We're fans of our own characters. Some more art that my Dungeon Master Rowan drew of Grey with a mysterious golden lady we all keep seeing in our dreams who we are pretty sure might be ghost but we aren't a hundred percent sure well we're pretty sure and it, that's that's the theory we're going with until we're proven wrong we got a magical diadem from a competition that we were in and ghost had some strong reactions to all of us putting the crowns on ourselves and putting them on each other it was very fun to see how ghost reacted to each of us wearing the crown and they weren't a huge fan of any of us putting it on but they thought it was kind of cute the way that our party met was through a competition where we were competing to get a magical crystal the idea of the campaign is that we are in a world where the darkness is dangerous and can attack you so everybody has to have light sources all the time the rich people have lots of light sources the poor people don't really have much so we were competing for a big chunk of glowing crystal that would be a lifesaver and now we've gotten into some mysterious tyings with nobility and it's very fun to learn all the secrets about everyone here is me setting up gray's inventory page um, I wanted to keep track of the packs that she has, well, her single pack and what's inside, as well as her gold, which she doesn't have much of, and her inventory, which mostly is books right now. She's really gotten into stealing books from rich people, so I guess that's happening now. I guess, I guess she enjoys uh, victimless crimes. <laughs> really the en enemy in D&D &D is, is just rich people and capitalism, so we, we truly love to see it. I just added in a couple extra Procreate doodles and little printout photos, and it made the page look very cute. Grey doesn't currently have any magic items, but I wanted to put a page in there anyway for when she eventually gets some, but she does have a lot of components. I wanted to use the wizard component pouch for this character, so whenever I cast a spell, I'm always talking about if she pulls out some glow worms, or some herbs, or some rose petals or sand and soot it makes it have a lot of flavor and it's so much fun to play when you have a character that's pulling all kinds of stuff out of her pockets and throwing it around to cast spells 
it's so, so much more fun than just using a spellcasting focus. I love it, and I've been having a ton of fun with it. This is Gray's Spellbook. For those of you who aren't familiar with wizards, wizards can pick up spells throughout the adventure by finding spellbooks from other wizards, and we learn two each level up. So it's nice to have a place to record because I'll be learning new spells between levels as well, and I've left some blank pages just for when Gray starts to learn higher level spells. She only knows up to level three now because we're level five characters, so it's nice to, again, use the binder to have more space for spells later on. And then lastly, here is Gray's uh, action economy page. It lists out her actions, her bonus, and her reaction for me, any physical attacks that she does, and how much damage they do, and also a picture of the party, also drawn by my dungeon master. And oh, actually, lastly, this is her familiar moon, a little fey cat who gets into plenty of adventures along with us. Uh, definitely the party pet. And there's another picture of Moon as we move into my notes. So I'm still using the little uh, craft notebook that I started the campaign with for my session notes. You can see here a little glimpse into my notes, some notes on things that exist in the canon of the universe just for fun. And I definitely want to do a longer video about how I take session notes in the future. So if you have any questions about that, please leave those down below or let me know in some way because I'd love to be able to answer your questions in lots of depth about how I take notes in a system that is very visually aesthetically pleasing. I also like to record how I use my portents too because it's nice to like look back and remember what I actually did with those numbers. And that's about it. We are a few months into this adventure and I can't wait to see how it continues. Before I go, thank you for a thousand subscribers. I'm at 1200 as I'm recording this and that is absolutely wild to me that that many of you are watching my content. Thank you for all the love on Lola's D&D video. I'm mind blown my return to YouTube couldn't have come at a more perfect time. And I can't wait to create more videos for you guys. I have lots of ideas, lots of things I'm working on. Be sure to follow me on Instagram at ShapingShan right there on the screen. And subscribe to my channel if you have it. I have a lot of stuff planned, including... I'd love to do a Q&A now that I've hit a thousand subscribers. If you have any burning questions for me, please leave them in the comments down below and uh, I may answer them in a future crafty Q&A. As always, keep it magical, and I'll see you again very soon. Goodbye, friends. <laughs>